what's up? This is Sebastian on his new computer I, that I got. Uh, I got a gigabyte board, the Z68X UD3HB3 Rev 1.3. Uh, this is a 5 gigahertz air-cooled 2700K overclocking guide. Uh, a lot of people are using the Asus boards because they're saying it's better. Uh, no, they are not. In my opinion, gigabyte is better because of one re main reason here. Look at my voltage, 1.42 volts. A lot of the guys with the Asus boards have to run it at 1.5 volts. I'm not saying everybody, but I'm saying that's what I've been seeing so far. And that's not good to run it at that high. Um, also, also this, your cache latency timings are very important, so get yourself some good RAM. I've got the Kingston HyperX 1600 megahertz RAM running at 999 24 clocks. Uh, I put that manually in the BIOS because it wasn't running that low. Uh, it, it runs at, well actually this, this RAM is actually supposed to be designed for that because it's that's what it's designed for but the BIOS was set to auto and it was running higher than it was supposed to so it's always good to find your stock latency clock, clocks for your RAM because for overclocking it's very important. Uh, I'll just show you the computer again. It's the Rev 1.3 revision. Uh, the BIOS is version 10. I believe this is the last BIOS uh, they have available right now, but I'm sure they'll come up with more. Um, they have a version 11, but I wouldn't upgrade it because it's a beta version. So just stick with the version 10. You should be okay. And let, let me show you guys how to overclock this machine. Um, and your machines, hopefully this will help you out a bit. Uh, right now I'm getting a CPU score. You can compare the results with all these CPUs. And mine is right at the bottom there, which is a bit faster than pretty much all the 2700Ks that are out doing uh, performance tests, because my machine is overclocked to 5 gigahertz. And yeah, let me just reboot the machine. And let's turn this off. And then I'll show you guys how to get it that, that high with the Gigabyte board. I would personally use <clears throat> the Gigabyte board. I love the Gigabyte boards. I've always have. I've had a... I used to have the Core 2 Duo 2.1 gigahertz overclock to 3.2. So that's pretty good. And that was running 24-7, no problems for five years. Um no blue screens. I ran Prime 95 for like that thing could run for days. Okay. Okay. We'll go into. Okay, so your CPU clock ratio is 50 times because you want to hit 5 gigahertz. Um, system multiplier. I changed mine, the, the motherboard was reading my RAM wrong, so I changed mine to 16, 16 times. It was at 1333, so I changed it to 16 times, and that's reading right now because it's my, my RAM is supposed to be 1600 megahertz. Okay, and see, so you can see the revision right there. F10, okay, so if you're not on BIOS version F10, update it to F10. And let's see what we got. Okay, when you go into here, your DRAM timing selectable. This is the only thing I changed in here. I put it to expert, okay? And then the channel A timing settings. You go into there, and then you change the timing settings to according to your RAM. So if you've got like 9, 10, 9, which is a lot of the G skill RAM, or if you've got a lot of the Kingston RAM is pretty low. I like Kingston. Patriot RAM is actually really good too. If you guys like uh, Patriot, go with Patriot. They're really good. Um, so I've got, this was set to 27. So I, I set everything down 999, 24. Okay? Because that's that's the stock. I don't know why. The, the motherboard does not read my RAM properly when it's set to auto. So I changed all that. Okay, now the voltage. This is where you guys, see it's need to do. Okay, so see it says 1.47. 
it doesn't actually run at 1.47 because there's actually a pull of the CPU volts. So it actually levels it down to, I guess, 1.42, which is well within, like, you could, you could basically run that all the time, I think. Um, according to Intel, like, I've actually talked to some Intel techs and they said that's okay. So, the QPI voltage, uh, I upped this up to 1.090. Okay, the system agent voltage, which is the voltage of the whole motherboard, I upped that up just increments of 0 0.01. So it's right there, 0 0.930. And the pull, I pretty much left it at stock. My, my, a lot of people have their stock pull at 1.7 but mine was reading 1.8 so I just upped it up to 1.820 and the DRAM voltage I just upped it up to 1.520 just to give it some extra juice um, miscellaneous settings I left that enabled enabled for virtualization just in case I do that down the road um, okay you want to go into okay now you want to go sorry you want to go back into your advanced CPU core features and you want to leave everything auto, okay? Auto, auto, enabled, disabled. Now I do actually want to use turboing because I don't want to be, I don't want to leave my CPU running at five gigahertz all the time. So I'm gonna be turboing my CPU to run at at 1.6. I guess that's the stock, so it'll throttle at 1.6 go to 5 gigahertz. I don't want it running at 5 gigahertz all the time just so I can have a stable CPU and that's pretty much what and it will run cooler and it won't consume that much power and all that kind of stuff so that's good. So core CPU cores enabled all of them. Multi call uh, multi threading course enabled. Uh, CPU enhanced halt disabled. C6 state thermal monitor ESI function disabled. It's just disable all those so it's not pulling more uh, instructions from the CPU that you don't really need. Okay, you want to go back into your advanced BIOS features. Okay, no, not this. You want to basically disable, I don't know if you guys are using it, I'm not using onboard audio, I never do. I use a uh, different audio card. I'm using the M Audio 2496, which I love, and I've loved that for eight years now, and I haven't changed, so there's no reason for me to upgrade. Um, so I've disabled the audio, onboard audio, and the onboard video card because I'm not using it. But if you guys are really hardcore into overclocking, I recommend you getting, I don't know if it would make a difference really, but maybe getting an external sound card, just throwing in an Audigy or something like that. That way it'll take less stress from the whole motherboard. So it might be a good recommendation, but it's up to you. Um, and also a video... Yeah, I recommend getting a video card for you guys. The 6850 is a wise choice. Uh, I've got the Radeon. Right now, it's totally beating out the GeForce for the same price range. And man, I'm telling you right now, I just ran Resident Evil benchmark test, Resident Evil 5 on 1900 by 1200 FFA, like ultra settings, everything high. And it runs constantly at 60 frames per second, like smooth. Um, Skyrim runs ultra high settings, everything maxed out, totally smooth, 60 frames, pinned at 60 frames a second. Every single game I throw at it runs smooth. There's nothing I've tested, which I probably have to put Crisis on here and test that out, Crisis 2. But you can always tell when it's a good video car when it's got two slots. Two sl slots. So much game. <laughs> but, okay. Um... Basically, yeah, that's my build. And <clears throat> let me get back into Windows here. And let's run CPU ID and I'll run a bunch of temperatures. Temperature monitoring in here. Right now it's just idling, so it's idling at 34 degrees. And you can see the voltage. Gigabyte, go gigabyte, man. 1.42 volts, 5 gigahertz. Now that is very good. Thank you, gigabyte. Thank you, gigabyte, for making a wicked board. 
It's a, it's an awesome board. I recommend you getting this board, and hopefully that will help you guys out. Um, that build is for, or the the build is for the Gigabyte Z68X UD3HB3 motherboard. Um, if you guys like the video, rate, subscribe, and yeah. If you have any comments, just leave a comment. Thanks, guys. Peace.